Good morning. I'm coming from Ministry of Defence, uh, and the topic of my today's morning speech is cyber is everywhere. It is actually everywhere. It's uh, behind this curtain in a massive concentration. It's around us uh, here in this uh, originally basketball room uh, I love as well. I had to admit that I'm coming from a time when it was not like that. Beginning of 1980s, when I was a small kid, TVs and radios had lamps, and uh, if they had a shaky picture, you fixed them with, uh, mildly said, knocking on those <coughs> technical things. I remember that it was roughly 1984 I found a piece of wood. I took a pen and I created a very wooden phone out of that. We even didn't have a landline uh, phone those days in my home, so I don't know where the idea came into my head. But I draw a screen there as well. Uh, very static one, lagged as hell, uh, actually standing, because it was just a picture. And a bit more than uh, 20 years later, first iPhone was sold. I recognized it immediately. <clears throat> and then, well, the cyber area started or it was it was it was then when it it started to to roll it's now it's everywhere really it's banking it's uh, ticket offices it's uh, well entertainment uh, it's it's also vacuum cleaners uh, our security department in ministry of foreign affairs prohibited to use robot vacuum cleaners in our embassy in vilnius where i came from, because cyber is everywhere, and uh, as it gives you a lot of opportunities, it also contains risks. It's already mentioned cyber criminals, hacktivists, state-origined uh, uh, actors as well. And you need to be ready for that. I, yeah, rightly said I was in Ukraine when large-scale war started. I was there before, and the cyber attacks were there before, from Russia against uh, Ukraine. They attacked uh, banks. Ukraine struggled, but uh, managed. They uh, attacked uh, government offices, uh, right before the large-scale war started, on the moment large-scale war started, and after that, uh, hitting Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine so hard that for weeks their email system, official email system, didn't function. They, I mean Russians, shoot the missiles uh, against the power stations, but in parallel they attacked with cyber means the SCADA of power stations to take the electricity out. So we sat there with uh, well blackouts. Four hours you got uh, electricity, four hours you didn't. Uh, again, four hours you got, and I put my laundry into washing machine, pushed the expert button, and <laughs> managed to do my laundry those days. Everything uh, went on on a battlefield, in a virtual world, but also in a physical world. When the majority of uh, diplomats came back to Kiev, uh, summer 2022, I got a call from French ambassador in Kiev. I was sitting in my office in, uh, in Estonian embassy between the breaks of the air alerts, and the French ambassador asked me, well, Kaimo, do you really organize a huge reception for the whole diplomatic corps during low circumstances. I just looked the invitation I got from your embassy and I'm say, I, I said, I answered to him, no, I'm, I'm not going to do the reception and I have not sent out the invitation. It was a fake one with malware coming 
you know where from. But it was so skillfully and masterfully done that it uh, fooled, in a first glimpse, uh, the one who opened it. Well, good, you have the contacts, you know the one who know the one, you make a call and you are certain that it was not, not the right one and you can already do the cybersecurity magic uh, layer practicing behind the curtain at the moment. Well, once again, cyber world, physical world uh, have uh, really joined together and the line between them is really, really blurry. It's happening here as well. Already mentioned the attacks against our, our government. Uh, for example, DDoS attacks against uh, Estonia has uh, raised four times during the Ukrainian war. We are getting, uh, during one month, as big amount of DDoS attacks as it was before the large-scale war started in Ukraine. But we are working against that, together with uh, good allies. We need to be resilient, because cyber is everywhere. We need to train, and that's why we are running a cyber range called CR14, meant for the different institutions to practice their capabilities there. This is why we are sending not only shells and well, bullets for Ukraine to fight back Russian aggression, but also running the IT coalition together with Luxembourg and uh, other countries who have joined us to invest in to help Ukraine battle back, not only on a battleground, which quite often has been compared with the World War I. Actually, it's full of... Uh, cyber nowadays the most we can even call simplistic uh, weapon as artillery is full of cyber nowadays so that's why we are investing into that and this is why we all together organize this kind of event here today in Tartu where we can practice how to defend ourselves maybe even, I call it, proactive defense to do it in a more suppressive way. I wish you all a great day here in an environment where it is all around us a cyber. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kaiman. I will not let you do oh, a well, leap no yet. Well, no well. Um, so our audience also have a, a chance to ask questions. As I can tell, like it's you know it's it's Friday morning, it's early, people are still a bit shy. Uh, it's it's a nice method. So if you can have again the the Slido uh, QR code and the number on the background, so that people could ask questions. But uh, until date, uh, they are you know thinking what they would like to ask. Uh, from my side, because my background is especially from the sure. Defense Ministry, uh, and I used to especially cover uh, cyber cyber security there. Something that uh, maybe you can, you can tell our audience as well is that uh, the Ministry of Defense uh, is, is very, very also hardly working for the, uh, you know, uh, raising a bit of more uh, git, not the gits, but also like the future workforce in that sense, by doing the cyber conscription. So that besides actually going with nine to twelve months into the forest with your with your gun, uh, you can also do nine months actually as as a cyber uh, conscription because that's kind of a compulsory thing for every guy who turns eighteen here in Estonia. So maybe you can just uh, briefly talk about this because is it still correct that? We have seen like much more applications of people that would like to do uh, cyber con uh, conscription that we actually can actually even uh, accept all of these people. Uh, so it has become very, very, very popular. Well, the case is that for Estonia, the most uh, important, uh, let's call it natural resource, is humans. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I always say that 
Estonia is not a small country, we are a compact country. I, I refuse to use Estonia as a small one. We are compact. So the amount of people are also compact. Mm -hmm. uh, and we need to find for everybody the field they can uh, bring in their skills in 100%. Forest is fine. Gun is fine as well, actually, but uh, as the, the, the tools are so portable, you can do your cyber magic uh, also in the forest. Uh, so uh, that's absolutely right. We, we are picking and precisely picking the right persons to the right skills, and uh, that gives you the synergy. The same thing I mentioned about the uh, Ukrainian war. The First World War trench battles actually include nowadays huge amount of cyber so we need it yeah i've been i've been always saying as well like as uh, just for the information here in estonia like if you are a lady uh you don't have to do your uh, conscription so it's not like uh, but you compulsory can. but, but th you this, can. Is, this is what i wanted to say so if i would be again 18 and 19 years old young uh, young woman uh which i'm not anymore uh so I, i would definitely use that chance to spend this nine months because i think that's kind of an experience if you can protect your st uh, state in in cyberspace and especially from the military side uh Uh, that that's, that's an experience that you can never get from from anywhere else. So, so that's uh, something that is, I think, very, very, very uh, important. So that uh, there's a different fields. There's a cyber command. Uh, we have uh, actually there's a cyber defense league part. Exactly. Uh, yeah. There's our intelligence services who have teams. Where I'm, uh, yeah, my background is left as well. So I'm I'm smiling that uh, those teams can do the things they can never do in a private life actually so uh, yeah. without being sentenced <laughs> and uh, and one other question because still it seems that people are a bit shy you know it takes a bit of time for the questions uh, from my side so very recently I think it was one and a half months two months ago Estonia for the first time ever publicly attributed uh, an attack from the Chiru uh, to you know to Chiru <laughs> uh, the attack happened in 2020 uh, so it took around four years for the investigation investigation and everything. Why do you think this is important as well? And in terms especially for the educational perspective, what have we learned from these processes uh, for, when it comes to the attribution? And, and you have been an ambassador and like in, in terms of also uh, for the diplomatic, the cyber diplomacy side, uh, why, why this is so essential so that we actually publicly say and point the fingers? Well, the I think we need to call the spade the spade, uh, call the things w with the right names. And we know who our enemy is, so we, we shouldn't be uh, too polite uh, saying that, yeah, we were attacked by, uh, I, well, I don't know, we, by whom. We know by whom, then let's, let's call it out, actually. So uh, that, that in case of yeah, coming from diplomacy, I have quite several times said that diplomacy is not about protocol or, or being uh, over the edge polite. It's about uh, skills to convince someone mm -hmm. in something. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we want to say that, hey, we are on a directed attacks from Russia, we call it out. Yeah, and besides this, again, when we see the patterns there, there is something that we can learn and again prepare ourselves for the for the next attacks to kind of prevent as well. That's the cooperation yeah. part, because yeah. they are using the tools against us, what they tomorrow use against Sweden or day after that against Latvia. If we are not uh, cooperating and Uh, sharing uh, our lessons identified, uh, we are never reaching the lessons learned. So uh, let's do cooperation. So we actually have received now questions also from the from the audience. I, I, I told you it takes a bit of time. Uh, but there is already four questions. So I'm, uh, as we have around four minutes, I'm going to take two of them over here. So what's your opinion regarding Ukraine's volunteer cyber army uh, by the locals who, together with the government entities, are carrying out cyber attacks against Russia? Should we attack back? Uh, as I said, I, I have uh, in, maybe not invented, but I'm using the term proactive defense. Well, I like that. Which, <laughs> is, uh, <coughs> which is basically we are attacking back. Because yeah. uh, active defense is the most uh, well uh, efficient way. It's uh, You need to with, with the same as with missiles, 
don't uh, take down the arrow, they will take down the archer. So take down where the attacks are coming, actually. Yeah, and we have seen also in terms of like again raising the awareness side there as well to the Russian like population that uh, Ukrainian also you know voluntarily have attacked their uh, TV channels so that to actually show the real pictures what's happening in the fields there as well. I've been in yeah. Ukraine during the large scale war. Yeah. There was only one channel because they merged everything else done. into one uh, information channel. So yeah, well, that's. Uh, that's the life for Russians as well. Yeah. Need to be. And there is an question also very much related to this, and I understand why people are, are especially focusing on these topics. So what was the most surprising move by the Russians in the first days of Russian scale, uh, full-scale invasion of Ukraine? Um, I, I, if um, you can somehow kind of uh, relate this to cyber as well, because I do know that yeah, they, yeah, well, they first tried yeah, to yeah. attack uh, Ukraine in cyberspace, it failed, and then we saw some additional steps happen. I think that was the most surprising thing, that uh, the communication mm. survived, and uh, the internet, or the, well, yeah, the internet survived, actually, the, the mobile uh, connection survived, actually, all those uh, apps we use to communicate between each other, because we have agreed, basically, that if there will be a blackout and we cannot send messages via different uh, apps between each other, where shall we go and how shall we do? It survived for a very short period, so maybe one hour bit more, sometimes the internet was gone, but uh, you managed to take it through the mobile internet and, well, that was Surprising. maybe really a biggest surprise, because uh, I was convinced that Ukrainians are good soldiers, mm -hmm. they will fight back, uh, it will not fall in three days or three weeks, but yeah, that uh, communication channels remained uh, functioning, mm -hmm. that was a surprise. So, nation of engineers uh, mm. <laughs> beyond uh, being of fighters as well actually that didn't surprise me but yeah this one kind of like the prevention matters as well i'm taking the last question as well because i really do like that one as well um, but how do we mitigate the knowledge and generational cap uh, between two who recruit now into cyber defense versus the generation of officers who we expect to lead them i think that's a, that's a very good one as well in terms of again Let's uh, put them together in the same room. I think. Do you think they, they will understand each other? Yeah, the, the age is not, uh, I think, so much. Uh, uh, how to say, uh, showstopper? Because uh, my my mom started to do the e-voting before me. Oh. So so well, I think uh, just put them together, give them a task. Uh, let, uh, let them learn from let each other. Let them <laughs> learn from each other. You're absolutely right. All right. Uh, I'm not going to keep you here on the stage no, no longer, but uh, let's uh, do a round of applause uh, to Kaimo uh, for his keynote and, and also the, the answer. So thank you very much, Kaimo. <laughs>